This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. Welcome to a special edition of Couples Court. We're taking a break from hearing cases to look back at some of the most outrageous moments that have taken place in our courtroom. There have been moments of joy, moments of shock, and moments of heartbreak. And with heartbreak, a lot of other things get broken, busted, and torched in the process. Just take a look at this. I go back to the front of the house, and I look, and that's when I see a woman. I instantly punch the window out. I got in my car, and I, I hit him. Man on the door three times, and he didn't answer. So I, so I went to the door, and I just kicked it in, honey. And they say hell has no fury, like a woman scorned. But it's our experience here at Couples Court that men get a little hot under the collar when they think they're being cheated on. Now, where there's smoke, there's often fire. And in this case, Mr. Harmon was so certain that his fiance was cheating that he took out his anger on her wedding dress. Watch this. I proceeded to go in the bathroom and find my dress laying there burnt. I was like, what happened to it? You know, he's like, oh, well, um, see what happened was. I got it caught on a cigarette. Mr. Harmon? Did you burn her dress? Yes, I did. Okay. Why did you set the dress on fire? Because I was mad. It wasn't intentionally, it was like out of spite. What was running through your mind as you were building up? Like you her, her, her seeing her ex-boyfriend and her lying to me and her with her co-working, the, the hidden galleries in the phone, like, that, it gets to me sometimes. You know, I think about it, so I just took it and I just, you know, set it on fire. And it, so when I stomped it, I just okay. stood it in the bathroom so she can come home looking, because it's the first place she go, because she's always in that mirror. He was hurt, and he was hot, but it was definitely not the right thing for him to do. We have an update from them. Watch this. He was recently on Cooper's court here about a month ago. Uh, because he thought I was cheating, and yes, I was not. Yes, he so, pretty much trusts me now, because right. he knows I was not lying. Right. Thank y'all for everything. We really support y'all. We really with the movement, and <laughs> thank y'all. Give me a kiss, Doug. Give me a kiss. <laughs> now, that wasn't the only case where suspicions of cheating led to a fire. Ms. Jones got fed up with her husband's questionable behavior, and she took out her anger on his wardrobe. She said I smelled like sex. She went crazy, burnt all my new clothes. I just bought everything. She went in the back and went crazy on him. All right, Ms. Jones, did you do what he's saying you did? She yes, I did. <laughs> That's what, straight out of waiting to exhale, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Ms. Jones says as soon as they got home, they started counseling, and they are taking things day by day. There's another case that was outrageous for a number of reasons. Here's a reminder. She was so basic. I'm bad, she's not. So it didn't even cross my mind that this could be a woman that he's like involved with. So Mr. Pearson, your girlfriend knocks on the door and finds you're living with another woman. How does that happen? Your Honor, this was a friend from the past, okay? She was down on her luck. She came to me last minute asking me if, if she can stay with me. And is she still living with you? No. Okay, so when she was living with you, were you ever sexually active no. with her? I'm trying to figure out why you didn't tell your girlfriend. I thought it was to be a quick turnaround, like maybe 90 days. How long did it take you to get on your feet? Doesn't 90 that... days? Your friend would have stayed there for three months without you telling your girlfriend? I mean, ain't that a probationary period? Like, that's like, that's like 90 days, like. Ms. Terrence, what do you hope for for this relationship? I hope that he is not cheating. Like, maybe he did a little bit in the beginning when we first met, that's fine. But once we establish a relationship, like, there is no reason to cheat after that. You got all this. Why would you mess that up? Well, there it is. The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. I can't believe you would do this to me for some basic Well, just because someone has made a mistake doesn't mean the relationship is over. So what do you think? Is it over between Ms. Turchie and Mr. Pearson? I did find out that he was, in fact, lying and cheating on me. I just feel like now our relationship will be even stronger. I've, now I know the truth, and I'm going to be using that moving forward. Thank you, Couples Court. As we saw, people get outraged after the truth is revealed. And as we've seen in our courtroom, there are often three sides to every story. Ms. Perkins brought her photographer husband to court after she found seductive photographs of a half-naked woman taken in their bed. Take a look. Mr. Courier, yeah. did you sleep with this woman? No, Your Honor, I did not. So you just lied on the bed up in your house on your wife's sheets taking pictures? Now, the half-naked woman. Why the half-naked woman, yes. That's like a, po a picture that you will post on Instagram saying that thank you for working with this person here. You are not buying any of this. No. 
Have you ever had sexual relations with Mr. Courier? No. I mean, it was just harmless flirting. I gotta go with the lie detector test in these pictures. They all indicate that you had sexual contact with Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams, so what really happened when you took these pictures? Drew, you are my friend. But, I mean, you have to be honest sometimes. So what happened? Did you all have sex? Yeah. Whoa, I was not expecting the mistress to come clean. Did the couple stay together? Let's find out. Me and him decided that we was just gonna call it quits and get a divorce and continue to work as parents together and co-parent. It's unfortunate that Ms. Perkins and Mr. Currier couldn't salvage their marriage. True. We have to take a break and we'll have more outrageous couples court moments when we come back. Couples Court is back, and today we're bringing you some of the wildest, most outrageous moments that we've seen and heard in our courtroom. Cutler, people have a dozen reasons for cheating, but one of the most outrageous reasons I've heard comes from an online article saying that most men cheat because the woman looked really hot. In the case of Vani versus McKellop, the defendant used a similar excuse for past infidelity. Well, like she said, she's a porn star, <clears throat> so. <laughs> Oh yes, Mr. McKellar. We'll get more into that case later. But first, let's look at some of the outrageous things people have brought to court as evidence. This is what I'm used to. You know what I mean? This is what I'm married right here. This is her now. You know what I mean? While I'm at work. Okay, so it looks like you've got some handprints on the top of the car. Why would the top be dusty and not the side? Well, she's, um, you know? <laughs> oh. This is my, my size. <laughs> A teen. <laughs> this is the size that I found, a four. Oh. I haven't wore a size four since I was 19 or 20 years old. And because I'm in crazy mode, I'm like looking now. And you know what I find is a bra. Oh. Yeah, in the car. Those were pretty crazy. But do you remember in the case of Thomas versus Mooney, I had to call my own mother to make sense of the evidence. Take a look. I found some lotion, some sweet smelling lotion. Oh, this is the type of lotion I found. He said that's his mom's lotion. And his mom is 70 and disabled. And this is the type of lotion my mom used. Okay, let me see okay. that. Okay. <laughs> hello? Mom? Hey, hello? Mom, I'm in court. I got a case in front of me. Me and Mr. Cutler are having this dialogue about whether or not a mature woman would use a fruity scent. What kind of lotion would you use, Mother? Well, I use the classic lotions, the ones with a subtle or mild fragrance. So would you use a fruity scent like strawberries or peaches or anything like that? No, that's for young women. I'm too old for that. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Now, we're not done. After the break, we'll have more couples court moments. We'll be right back. So welcome back to today's special update edition of Couples Court. We have a multiple choice question for you. According to a recent study, 36% of men and women who admit to cheating claim they had an affair with A, their brother or sister-in-law. B, a neighbor. C, a coworker. D, a member of their church. The answer is C, a coworker. 36% of men and women admit to having affairs with a coworker. Additionally, 17% of people have admitted to cheating with a sister or brother-in-law. These next couples were accused of infidelity a little too close to home. In this case, Miss Barker accused her husband of sleeping with one of her family members. We get into an argument. Instead of us putting hands, I like to take a walk and walk it off, you know? I come back after calming down, I check in my kids' room. Mr. Davis is in my kids' bed with my family member in his boxes, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you checking your head? No. That morning, was cleaning up in the kids' room, just cleaning up, getting all the toys up. In some kind of way, I dozed off and I woke up and she was under me. Wait a minute, but, under but, you? But when I woke, but when I woke up, when I woke up, Miss Miss Barker had came in the room going crazy on us. Mr. Davis was asked. 
Have you had sexual intercourse with any of your wife's family members? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. I'm just done. With, I'm done with the marriage. It's over. I'm done with it. It's over. Our staff touched base with Miss Barker, and she says fighting out the truth was all she needed to move on without him. Earlier on, we took a quick look at the case of Vani versus McKellar. He admitted cheating with a porn star, and his longtime girlfriend also accused him of cheating with someone close to her. He was messing around with my friend's daughters. <laughs> and he always looks for her on Facebook, always searches for her. I don't know why. I want to know why. We want to know why, too. <laughs> when I disappeared in the five weeks, this was the, was the person in 2015 that I did cheat on with. Oh. And uh, I told you this. No, you did not. I told you before. What else are you hiding? I told you before. <sighs> OK, so him telling you today is the first time yes, you're hearing it is, this? Yes. How long ago did this happen? 2015. The court followed up with the couple, and Miss Vani told us that she and Mr. McKellop are still together and are talking about finally getting married. She's been in love with him for such a long time, and I do hope they can work it out. Our next couple came to court because Miss Wells believed her boyfriend was spending too much quality time with his clients. Mr. Mapp insisted he was just a club promoter, but was he mixing business with pleasure? Are there any other women in particular that you're concerned about? His female business partner. Oh. Okay, and why are you concerned about her? Well, she came about two years ago um, out of nowhere, and then now all of a sudden they're best friends and they're always together. They took a business trip that was supposed to be one day. It ended up being three days. Well, that's the truth, though. We, we added some extra stops, but nothing inappropriate happened. You believe that they are actually intimate? Yes. You asked Mr. Mapp, since 2015, up until now, have you had physical sexual contact or intercourse with your business partner, Ms. Owsley? What was his response? Your Honor, he pleaded the fifth and refused to answer the question. It makes no sense. Why would I have to be asked to question this? It's so obvious. Like, it ain't no way. You could have answered the question. There's no way. I think this is the first time that this has happened in this court. How do you feel about the fact that he pleaded the fifth and he's, refused he's to answer? He's probably guilty. There ain't no way. After the case, we had his business partner take a polygraph test to see if their relationship extended from the boardroom into the bedroom. And we have the results right here. We asked Ms. Owsley, since becoming business partners up until now, have you had physical sexual contact with your business partner, Mr. Mapp? What was her response? She said no. And the lie detector determined that she was being deceptive. Let's see if that information has made a difference in their relationship. Our relationship is, is way too strong. It's way too strong to let, you know, a few bumps in the road mess up anything. I'm done with the games, and I just want to make it work. We're living happily ever after. Now, in this next case, Mr. Taylor found an outrageous sex tape of his wife with another man. But when he came to court, he still had hopes of reconciling his marriage. At this time in our life, man, that was my best friend. That was my lover. That was my homie. That was, that, that, that was, my, that was my other half. We did everything together. I was adopted. I ain't had the chance to really experience a real good family life like most people. So she know that like, that's something that I really want to structure in my life is to, is to build and have a family. So your belief in that she's lying and that she's cheating has driven, literally driven you from your home with her. Gone, yes. I was in Mr. Taylor's corner. He really wanted his family back. But then Ms. Jackson dropped a bombshell. Yes, she did. But we're going to save that until after the break. Stay with us and don't miss the outrageous conclusion to this case. Couples Court is back and we're wrapping up with one of the most outrageous cases we've had in our courtroom, Taylor versus Jackson. Ms. Jackson was a woman who was clearly caught between her lover and her husband. Take a look. Mr. Charles, when was the last time that you were intimate with Ms. Jackson? 
this morning. Miss Jackson, were you intimate with Mr. Charles this morning? See how, see how I react? Quiet. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Life goes on. You chose, you made your decision. I can't keep on trying to rescue you for your own decisions. You gotta live with them. I couldn't believe she did that. You want to reconcile with your husband, but you're still sleeping with the man you made the sex tape with, and you bring him to court? Well, apparently that was the last straw for Mr. Taylor. He told a member of the staff that the relationship is over. Hello, court is in recess, and today we're updating you on couples who vow to love one another until death do us part. But did all of the mayhem that came with allegations of cheating in their unions? In our first case, Sonia Collins' husband was an ordained minister, but she believed he was doing more than spreading the gospel with other women. After church, one of the ministers come up to me and say, ask your husband to stop calling my daughter phone after 10 o'clock at night. I say, what? I've tried to do everything right, and it's like it didn't work like the fiery darts was able to penetrate. One of my coworkers pulled me to the side one day. Oh, my uh, God. She's a stripper, mind you. Here she say, your husband asked me to do a private dance for. That's a lie. She was saying that the club that she was working at wasn't finished being remodeled or whatever. I said, well, maybe you need to do some private dances. I, uh, she's a stripper. No, I'm just trying to get my arms around an ordained minister telling a stripper to make some extra right. money for right. private right. dances. If it comes back that he's cheating, you're done. I'm done. I'm done. What were your initial findings? When Mr. Collins came into the room, he had an emotional breakdown. Wow. What did you conclude regarding infidelity during your marriage? He gave me no signs of deception. And so overall, I believe that Mr. Collins is being truthful and he has not cheated on his wife since they've been married. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collins was faithful during the marriage, but has the couple worked past their trust issues? They sent us this update. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cutler. How are you guys doing? It was great to be in you guys' courtroom. Since then, my wife has begun to listen to me a little bit more. But on the other hand, I did learn. Treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. And I want to thank you for that. Now I have one problem, and that problem is she has yet to take her test. And there's a lot of questions I want to answer too. Well, it sounds like they still have some work to do before they can fully trust one another. I'll say, and that reminds me of another case where a man didn't even trust his wife to cook him dinner. Ever since she lost 100 pounds, she started dressing for vloggery, sneaking out that night, and putting stuff in my food. <laughs> Pork chops, I'm taking a nap. When I get out of work, chicken, I'm That's taking a nap. That's because he's tired. You know, this, it got to be uh, South Peter. <laughs> You believe that she put saltpeter in the food to take your libido down? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Is that all you have? I see Negla J laying all on the couch and stuff. Oh, OK. OK, she's in the bathroom taking selfies. To this day, I'm still waiting on those pictures. <laughs> Is this the maid outfit? Yeah, that's yeah. a maid outfit. <laughs> did you send these pictures to another maid? No, I did not. But I also bought stuff for uh, him so I could sing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> At him. He's sexy, oh my God. Why would I want to cheat on somebody that looks like that, really? I'm from New York, and I have never seen a black cowboy before, and he <laughs> had on a cowboy hat. <laughs> if you find out she is cheating, the marriage is over. Uh, it's 25 years has gone down the drain. Gone Boy, down I the really... drain. You look a little nervous. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> I'm just upset about this, so I'm just... It's just bothering me. Have you had sexual intercourse with any man other than Mr. Williams? What was her response? She said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> so did this Texas couple get back in the saddle? They can tell you better than we can. Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all. This is Tasha and Anthony from Texas sending y'all Texas size updates. As you can see, me and Anthony are still together. 
and uh, she let me decide to be the man of the family sometime because <laughs> I got a cab girl. From now on, we decided we're going to go on date nights and oh, yes. go on trips. We've been together for 25 years and we hope to be together 25 more, just like the couples. <laughs> I'm glad they put the past behind them. And you know, date night always puts a smile on my face. But in this next case, a date night led to marriage and mistrust, and they ended up right here. Uh-huh. She was on the sofa like this. All right. She's naked. I walk in. And what does she do? She covers herself up and closes the laptop. So what do you think she's doing? She said she was taking the modeling pictures, so she left the room. I open up the laptop, and it wasn't the camera background. It was actually a video chat background. And so you believe she was having a video chat with another man? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I was nude on the couch taking pictures. When you apply to a modeling job, you have to submit candid photos of yourself so that they can see what you look like to get hired for the paying job. Was Miss LeBeau building her modeling career or was she laying down a career as a video chat vixen? I can't call it. Stay tuned for an update on the LeBeaux and more cases of marriage mayhem when Couples Court continues. Welcome back. We're in the midst of another special update episode of Couples Court. Today, we're taking a look back at cases with couples who have entered one of the most challenging partnerships there is, marriage. Before the break, Ms. LeBeau's husband accused her of using her modeling career as a cover to cheat. But was he right? If she's cheating today, I, I have to just move on. It's make it or break it. Since you've been married, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your husband? No. Your Honor, the voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. We got together at a bar, so it, he can't really say anything. So, Casey, did the couple work through Ms. LeBeau's infidelity? Here's Mr. LeBeau with the answer. Well, when we got back home, we decided that, you know, it just wasn't fair for both of us just to keep going. But we have been doing counseling. We're still best friends. I mean, let's face it, we have a, an amazing child together. Hopefully someday in the future, you know, we can, you know, reconcile and get our stuff back together for our son because he deserves it. Maybe someday we'll have a better update for y'all. I'm sorry to hear that the LeBeaux couldn't work it out, but it's great that they sought counseling and are working together for their son. I'm all for that, Mr. Cutler. But this next case really touched my heart. He, like I said, he doesn't come home at days, weeks at a time. I mean, and blaming me for his, him not being able to go pro or complete his football dream. You work hard all your life for this. You plan, you have, you plan your step all the way up. I mean, I work extra hard. I work harder than anybody else on the field. I felt like it went to waste. I'm tired. I'm tired of the stress. I'm tired of my kids asking me where their dad is. I'm, it's hard on me to just sit here and pay all the bills. I'm sorry, baby. You know that. Miss Pruitt was worried that her former college football player husband had become a star player with other women. Miss Pruitt was heartbroken, but was her husband really scoring with other women? We'll bring you the answer in more cases of marriage mayhem when Couples Court continues. Welcome back to a special update edition of Couples Court, Marriage Mayhem. I'll be the first to tell you that having a successful marriage takes work. Yes, it does, but it's worth it. Before the break, a couple was on the brink of divorce after starting their family in college. Mr. Caitlin's dreams of playing professional football were crushed, and his wife suspected his suspicious behavior meant that he was cheating. When I was pulling up the um, text messages and the social media page, it had naked pictures back and forth, both of them. She sent naked pictures to your husband, mm -hmm. and he sent naked pictures back to her? Yes. And you know him? Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Catlin. Listen, it's just nothing like that. We, we, she's a friend of another friend. That's how we met, okay? Okay, uh, what, what? <laughs> wait a minute, wait. It don't matter how you met. The question the naked is pictures, why? I have, no, I have no idea what that is. I don't I, you know your husband I naked. Say, I say I know pictures. him naked. I saved the pictures. And when he pulled up in that van, his clothes was outside, 
And I was waiting for him. During your 10-year relationship, have you ever had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your wife? What was his response? Mr. Callan made an admission. He said yes. Tell your wife what you need to tell her. I was going through things at the time. I wanted to center her attention on me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I went and found her somewhere. Else. When he was gone, I wasn't cheating. I worked. I worked my butt off for my family. I applaud Mr. Caitlin for finally owning up to his mistakes. Yeah. But has he changed his ways? His wife sent us this update. Me and Marcus, it wasn't going to work out. We decided to just part our ways. I think that's best for me and my kids. I've learned that I deserve better. So I thank you for everything you did for me and I appreciate you. Mr. Cutler, it's unfortunate that Ms. Pruitt and Mr. Caitlin could not work it out, but I hope they continue to co-parent peacefully and be a positive example for their children. Up next, the Wamlins were more than just partners in life. Like us, they were also partners at work. However, when money went missing, their work relationship went out the window and Mayhem took over their marriage. I was going in our office to pay bills and money was missing, like 200 here, 300 there. There's no explanation for this money. So what do you think he was doing with the money? I don't I guess he was, I don't know if he was paying for somebody's apartment. I don't know if he was buying her jewelry. I don't know what he uh, was doing. No, money was not missing. I've never cheated on her. I got to pay a server's tips at the end of the night. I got to pay them in cash. He was standing at the door and a pretty young girl came walking around the corner and just I didn't walked think she up was that pretty, him. Your Honor. And you think, okay, there's something going on right there. It looked there. like she was there to either say, look, either me or her, or, <laughs> well, um, you know, whatever. And, and then she said, well, I'm here, I want to talk to the owner. The girl that approached was wearing a white shirt and black pants, which in New Orleans means you're a server. And so when she came up, I correctly assumed, I said, are you looking for a job? And she's like, yeah. Did she actually come to work at the restaurant? She said, no, she did not. Okay. Absolutely. All right, well, that was a good choice. You asked Mr. Wanlin, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Cheryl, in the four years you have been married? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Yeah. <laughs> I was so happy Mr. Wanlin was telling the truth, but was it enough to repair their marriage? Let's see what they have to say about their current situation. Hey, y'all, um, just gonna provide a little update for you guys. Uh, it's all gravy baby here in New Orleans, so, uh, you know, being fully exonerated by the head of the FBI polygraph department, I guess I couldn't have been cleared by a higher source except God himself, so I'm really grateful for you guys and for what y'all do. Y'all just have a blast every day at y'all's job, and you know, that was really an example to us, and we hope we can be that example to other people. So thank you for helping us get there. Thank you. That was so sweet. We appreciate it, and we are wishing you much happiness and much success. Well, in any partnership, there are rules of engagement. Rule number one for this next couple should have been do not have sex with another man in a car in front of your house. What? I go downstairs and I knock on the car and that's when I find my wife cheating with another guy. Wow. I was blankly, really, deliberately disrespecting him. Like, I'm not even really? gonna lie or try to cover it up. And that's the only way he paid attention to me. I have concerns if my daughter is mine. I just, I need to, I need to sleep at night. I need answers. So, when he took you back, what kind of promises did you make to him? Um, I promised him I would never sleep with nobody else. Miss Dixon was asked, when you returned home wearing no panties, did you have sexual intercourse with another man? What was Miss Dixon's response? She said no. What did the polygraph reveal? The polygraph determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. Thank you. That's only one. Thank you. It's only one. I can't believe Miss Dixon was telling the truth. I have to admit, I was utterly surprised. I agree, but that wasn't our last question. Catch the conclusion of this outrageous case and an update on where the two are now when Couples Court returns. Stay tuned.
We're back for the conclusion of this special episode of Couples Court. Today, we're taking a look back at couples whose nuptial agreements may have become null and void after leaving our courtroom. The union between Mr. Hunt and Ms. Dixon dissolved into chaos after he caught her in a car in front of their home having sex with another man. Too much. The trust was gone out of their marriage, and Mr. Hunt also wanted to know if the other man could have fathered his wife's baby. Let's go to the results. Ms. Dixon was asked, other than the one time you admitted to cheating during your marriage, have you had physical sexual contact with any man other than your husband? What was her response? She said, no, Your Honor. Lie. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being deceptive, Your Honor. OK. Ms. Dixon. Ms. Dixon. Do you have something you want to share? I haven't did anything. Well, the results indicate you were being deceptive when you answered that. Okay, Are you being deceptive know. now? No, I'm not. We can lead you to the water, but we can't make you drink it. Ms. Dixon was asked, could your youngest daughter be fathered by someone other than your husband? Your Honor, Ms. Dixon made an admission, and she said yes. <laughs> Mr. Hunt was crushed, but did he try once again to forgive and forget? Let's take a look. And my plans for the future, our future, is to grow closer as a family, to grow closer in our marriage, and to just move forward. And, and I would like to thank the Cutlers. Thank you, Cutlers. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad that Mr. Hunt and Ms. Dixon recognized that they had to fix their own issues before they could learn to truly open up to one another. Correct. We're wishing you and your family the very best.